Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Now, today's video is also going to be on how to edit like Tony Marfood or Tony Marford. I'm not really sure how to say his name, but he's a really big Instagram account. He's got 3.5 million followers, and I've been requested by quite a few people to edit um, some photos in his style. Now, I've already done a video on how to edit like him on Lightroom and um, on one photo, but I'm going to be trying to do a video on how to edit like him on Photoshop. We've been trying to expand um, into the Photoshop kind of region, doing a lot more Photoshop tutorials and stuff. So if you are new to the channel, don't forget, go ahead and click that subscribe button now. Um, and don't forget, turn on those post notifications as well. We're going to be bringing a load of brand new videos, lots of how to edit likes um, on both Photoshop and Lightroom. And um, we're going to be bringing loads of new stuff. So there's going to be bound to be something coming out for you um, over the next month. We'll be posting like every single day. So um, make sure you are subscribed to check out that new content that's coming to the channel. Okay, so um, as for the Lightroom ones, I also created a preset pack for Lightroom. Um, so I will be creating a preset pack for um, Tony, but for Photoshop. So if you do want to go ahead and purchase either one of those or both, I will put the links down below in the description. Go ahead and check it out. Um, it should be a preset pack for Photoshop containing about six to nine um, presets for you to go ahead and use. So what we're going to be doing today is basing um, a edit on this kind of style photo. Now, if you wanted to see how to edit more like in this kind of cityscape kind of style, um, do go ahead and check out the Lightroom one and just kind of apply the basic principles to Photoshop. But for this video, we're going to be trying to edit kind of more like these um, really kind of colorful, high contrast um, photos that he's done here as well. So just to kind of cover the range of photos that he posts. Um, so this is the photo we're going to be basing our edit of today. Okay, so here is the photo that we're going to be trying to edit. As you can see, it's kind of a very similar style to um, this this edit here, but um, obviously there is a little bit of work to be done to try and make this kind of more orange and teal kind of look to this photo. So what I will be trying to do is trying to get a more accurate representation of his style um, in this image here. So before we go ahead and jump straight into editing, it's probably worth noting that he what he kind of does in these uh, photos. So as you can see, he's got a lot of contrast in this image. It's pretty dark, um, kind of quite bright highlights. He has a lot of clarity in, into his images. You can see it's mainly in the hair. Um, and uh, in the tips of his highlights and his arms. Um, so what we're going to be just doing is trying to do that, making sure we don't fade out those shadows. We're not going to fade out the highlights either. And um, he's got a very high contrast look, quite dark shadows and quite bright highlights and quite contrasty kind of mid-tones. And you can see this in pretty much all of his photos. So we're going to see if we can go ahead and replicate this look. Okay, so this is the photo we're going to be editing, as I said. Um, so what we can do now is we're going to just open up our camera raw filter, um, and then we're going to go ahead and jump straight into editing. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to focus um, on the basics panel. So we're going to increase the contrast. That's the first thing we want to really be doing. Um, boost that contrast up quite a bit. Um, this one has got a bit of a vignette on the photo, but um, you can always crop it. Um, this is one I've got off online of a like a royalty-free website, but. Um, so it's not one of my photos, but we are going to increase that contrast, try and get quite a high amount of contrast. You can see already it's looking slightly better, uh, slightly more towards that kind of look. And the exposure, we're going to decrease again just a small amount. But the shadows, we're going to increase the shadows and just try and get a little bit more detail um, in the image. We are going to increase the highlights as well a little bit. Um, with the whites, we're going to increase those a bit as well, just kind of get this really kind of bright highlight kind of look to the image. Then with the blacks, we are going to drop those down just kind of make that a little bit richer. So you can see already it's beginning to work um, really quite more like his photos. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come down to the clarity and we're going to increase this. Um, you can see obviously as soon as we increase it, we get this really quite sharp highlights. You can see pretty much everywhere that this really does kind of hold in all of his photos. You can see this one as well, especially in his hair. This is where I usually find you can see this uh, work best. Um, so. You can see already that's looking a lot better. Now what we can do with the saturation is we are going to increase the saturation. Now on the Lightroom tutorial I told you to decrease it and that is because in these photos he kind of focuses on only a couple of colors um, and then he desaturates the rest of the photo. But with these photos it's a completely different kind of editing style. He really brings out the colors so the blues and the oranges are really kind of bright and vibrant and really quite colorful. Okay so with the vibrance as well um, you can go ahead and increase that. Um, what it's always nice though, I think, just to kind of decrease it a little bit. Um, just kind of, it really kind of desaturates the, the certain color tones, but at the same time, the saturation kind of gives them that bright kind of look. So what I find is decreasing the vibrance a little bit and increasing the saturation gives a nice balance um, to the high colorful kind of look to these images. Okay, so I might come back to vibrance and decrease that a little bit more. I quite like that look, but again, um, I don't know if that's kind of more towards his theme, so I'm just going to decrease those probably to about minus eight. 
Okay, so coming to the tone curve, you can see we've got a little bit of fade um, in this particular image, which we do not want. Um, obviously, if it's a raw file out of your camera, it probably won't have um, too much of a fade on the image. I shouldn't have any at all, to be honest, but um, we want to make sure we don't have any fade. So what I've done is I've just taken down um, the shadows a little bit, just to bring in that contrast of the shadows. We don't want to have any fade, so I've brought that out. Um, but you probably don't want to be adjusting your shadows at all and just leave them at the bottom here. Um, with the shadows here, oh, and we're going to bring those up a bit. Just need a little bit more detail in those shadows, I think. Um, nothing too drastic. Then the, the, the kind of the mid-tones, we don't want to bring those up too much because we lose a lot of detail and we kind of blow out those highlights. So I'm just going to bring those back to the center. Um, maybe drop them a little bit below um, the center mark if, if, if you can do. And then with the highlights, I just want to bring those up just a smidgen, just a bit. We don't want to be blowing those out either. And again, we don't want to be fading out um, the highlights. So you can see already that's really changed um, the look of the image. So if I just kind of drag this to the side, you can see so far the before and the after. This is the before look. And you can see we've already got a lot more contrast to the image. And it's beginning to really kind of look a lot more like Tony style. Okay, so moving on to the sharpening and the noise reduction. We are going to add quite a bit of sharpening to this image. Um, it will add some noise into the image. Um, you can see, kind of, especially on the light, if you look here, if you bring it up too much, you're going to get a little bit of grain in the image. But we are going to bring it up to probably about 20, 30. That's pretty high. And then we are going to increase the radius to about 3, um, probably leave that about 30. Probably leave it about 20, 30. Um, don't change the masking to leave it as it is. And then the luminance, you might want to, you know, it depends on how much um, sharpening you want to put in, but I usually put a noise reduction up to about 5, just to kind of counteract a little bit of that noise that we've just put into the photo. Okay, so now we come to the hue saturation and luminance panel. Um, in Photoshop, it's slightly different. You have them like this, um, whereas in Lightroom, I select all, so I've got them all in one long list. But we want to make sure we don't forget the saturation and luminance. So with the hues, um, we don't really have many reds in this image. We've got a little bit of pinks um, around here. So um, if you adjust these, you can see we can make it really pink, or we can make it kind of a little bit more of a greeny kind of look. Um, so if we're trying to look at the oranges, for example, in his photo, these are kind of slightly more of a pink orange than a green orange, if that makes sense. Um, so that look we can achieve by kind of bringing the, the reds down a little bit, probably to about minus 10. Um, the oranges, obviously, that's going to directly control um, this look. Um, we're going to leave those maybe at about minus 2, minus 3, just bring it a little bit more towards the pink side. You can see already we're trying to get a very similar color. Um, I might bring those down just a little bit more, maybe to about minus 5, minus 6. Okay, then the yellows. Um, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to bring these up more towards the green side. I'm going to pull mine all the way up to plus 100. These are just the kind of the highlights of the lights, if that makes any sense. Um, that's just kind of get a little bit more contrast between the two orange looks. I usually find that kind of works because if we bring it too far down, everything looks a bit too flat. Um, it's nice to have a little bit of contrast between the two colors. Greens, we don't really have any of those in this image. But as I said in the other video, we probably want to bring those to the right. If you do have any greens, just kind of make them more like of a bluey navy kind of marine kind of um, army green, I guess, I had to bring this up to the right. So I would just bring this up to the right if that was me. Um, and then the aquas, this is going to change the color of, uh, you can see the windows in the background there. Now, if we go over to his photos, you can see down here, especially in the bathtub, we've got a lot of this kind of aqua kind of style look to his images. I'll see if I can find another high, um, quite saturated look. So for example, these ones as well. Um, really quite a cool image. We've got a little bit of aqua going on or a little bit of teal in the blues. Um, so we will add in a little bit of um, teal in. And you can also do the same with the blues. You can see add in a bit more teal. But with blues, um, I'm probably going to bring this down to minus 18 and then bring the aquas up to about plus 16. And as you find, that works um, to get that kind of teal look to his photo. So let's go back to our reference photo, which is this one of him in the bath, um, and to compare the color of the blues. I think we're probably a little bit too light and maybe a little bit too um, tealy. So I'm going to bring up the blues, probably to about minus four, and um, bring the aquas to about plus 33. And you can see already we begin to get that, that look. It's beginning to work quite well. Okay, with the purples, um, we're going to bring those down because if you bring them up to the right, we get too much pink in the image. So we want more blue, so probably to about minus 25. Then the magentas, there's usually not much in the image, um, so we're just going to leave those. Um, at zero. Okay, so now we're going to come on to the saturation. Now with um, the reds, again, probably just leave those as they are. Um, to look at his image, you can see the two of colors are pretty saturated, um, but again, quite dark. So um, this is probably just judgment and personal preference now. Um, 
because obviously it depends on how bright and colorful your um, colors are. So if we bring down the oranges, I think we're gonna get a slightly more um, better looking image because if we bring them up too much, they kind of stand out a little bit too much. I think they're kind of distracting from the image a little bit. So we are gonna bring them down a touch, probably to about minus 18. With the yellows, I'm gonna bring those up. Again, as I said earlier, get that contrast between the oranges and the yellows. Um, and then with the blues, however, I am gonna bring those ones up because you can see if I bring those down, we get too much more of like a weird black and white kind of look. Quite a nice look, but um, not what we want in this image. So I'm gonna bring this up, probably to about plus 10, plus eight. You can see we're getting there towards his photo. Purples, um, I'm gonna bring this down to minus 100. Um, it's kind of distracting from the viewer to kind of bring my attention over here. So I want my attention to be on like the, the front building over here. So I think that's looking pretty decent. Now with the luminance, um, I'm not sure what to do with the blues. I'm thinking, here's one here, it seems to be pretty dark, but that obviously does mean, is probably because his image was taken like in a dark room, um, and ours appears to be um, have some light kind of bouncing off the, the windows. So um, I will bring it down a bit, I think. Um, and then on the oranges, I'm just gonna bring those up a bit just to brighten those up, and again with the yellows as well. Um, and then not really change much else, leave that as it is. Okay, now on the split toning, um, what I usually like to do is put the saturation on about 10 to 15 just to kind of get a, a look at what, what it's going to look like if we add some split toning to the image. Now in most of his highlights um, usually he's got this kind of nice orange look to it so we're going to put that on about 48, uh, 50, something like that just to kind of get that yellowy orange look. Um, plus 20 actually seems to be working quite nicely with the um, saturation so I'm going to leave that at plus 20. Saturation of the shadows, I'm gonna bring out to about plus 15 just to see what it looks like. And usually we want the blues um, in the shadows. So there's a little bit too purple. So I'm holding down the Alt key at the moment if you wanted. So I'm gonna bring those a little bit more towards the blue teal kind of side. And then probably adjust the saturation. Um, probably to about plus 15, I think that works quite nicely. So now this is just kind of the before and after. If I compare the two pictures side by side, you can see this one's the before. The after you can see immediately we've got a lot more contrast to the image um, and it's beginning to look a lot more like um, it would fit better on Tony's feed. So in terms of lens corrections we can leave that as it is, the effects we can leave that as it is, maybe a bit of um, for this particular photo the vignetting you could just um, um, bring it in a little bit. Um, then on the camera calibration we've got the red, green and blue primary. Now we are going to try and give this a little bit of a orange and teal kind of feel. Um, but nothing too much, but I'd bring it up to 100, that's a little bit too drastic. Um, so what I am going to do is bring up the reds to probably about plus 14, and bring down the blues, probably down to about minus 10. Um, leave the saturation, I think, where it is. Maybe bring up the saturation of the reds a little bit, and the blues probably a little bit as well, to about plus 20, plus 15. Okay, so that is basically the photo edited. Um, before I click OK, because this, I don't think I can show you a before and after once I've done that, and there's the before and after, um, if I put, try and put them side by side, you can see um, the difference that that edit has made. And if I compare that to his feed again, if we say this one for example, our reference photo, you can really see um, that we've, we've gone ahead and we've got that look. Maybe if I was to adjust anything a little bit more, I'd try and add a little bit more teal into the image, but um, I think that really does kind of show you roughly how to go ahead and get that look. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click OK. And there we go, now let's apply that to our image. And there we go, we have the final photo edited. Okay, guys, so that is the end of today's video. I really hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you've learned something from that. And you can go ahead and apply this uh, technique to all of your photos to try and replicate um, or try and use his style um, in your own style. I wouldn't recommend going and copying his style. Again, I say this in all the videos, try and come up with your own unique style. But um, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I said at the beginning of the video, there will be a preset pack for this, for Photoshop and for Lightroom. Down below in the description go ahead and check that out um, if you want to go ahead and purchase that pack but once again thanks for watching this video guys i hope you've enjoyed it and hopefully we'll see you in the next one and don't forget to go ahead and subscribe